And we have more information now on uh, that top story we were trying to bring you earlier. Some new findings, preliminary findings, that reveal that those orange droplets found in tens of thousands of tiny blue crab larvae are characteristic of the controversial oil dispersants. New findings back up the concern the dispersant BP used so widely may do more harm than the oil itself. I was more concerned about the corrective than the oil also. Now, researchers say it appears they've detected a corrected sort of fingerprint in these orange blobs found lodged in the bodies of tiny blue crab larvae collected from marshes that stretch from Texas to Florida. We're at unprecedented volumes of dispersant use so far. And that's what UNO's Martin O'Connell, who studies aquatic organisms that move through the water, says is the problem, that the volume of the EPA's pre-approved dispersant used to break down the oil probably turned it into small droplets making it easy to find its way under a shell. Something like a, with a shell, a small shell, a shrimp or a crab, it kind of gets stuck in some places, and if, if they can survive the actual toxicity and shed that shell, the oil can be released. If they can't survive, though, it's stuck there, then there's a problem. O'Connell says most components of oil won't bioaccumulate, meaning oil likely won't reach the food chain. He says with Corexit, no one really knows. If you're a small fish and you eat a thousand of these crab larvae and all of them have oil or corrected drops in, in them, they could get into the fish. That little fish could be eaten and so on and so on. New Orleans attorneys representing fishermen and cleanup workers who have left boats because they're sick have hired experts to test air and water quality samples. A toxicologist out of Florida found that some of these chemicals are in great excess of risk-based lethal levels, that the current hydrocarbon levels are capable of sterilizing our fisheries and estuary production zones. O'Connell shares similar concerns. I think they should be more concerned that we might be losing whole cohorts of these animals when they're very small, and we won't see the impact in the adults, but maybe three or four years from now when we're expecting adult crabs to be coming into Lake Punchdrain, there might not be as many out there. Because so many fish and crabs feed on crab larvae, some scientists fear the oil and dispersion droplets threaten to kill critical areas in the Gulf food web. Tulane University researchers say the results, while not conclusive, are likely. They're now waiting on two other independent tests.